So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and their challenges and what's really driving them uh, forward. So uh, this morning, I'm really delighted to have with us Daniel Condren, who's the director and and a financial advisor at One Mortgages and Protection. So Daniel, firstly, thanks for coming on board this morning. And if you'd like to introduce yourself and and the the one group, if you like, to, to the audience of what you do and how you help people, that would be really great. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, um, my name is Daniel. I am the founder and director of uh, One Financial Group, which we brand as One Mortgages and Protection, which is anything property related. Um, And then recently we've just launched uh, an agency, which is property management, sales uh, and other areas. So anything property related, we kind of advise and consult on. Brilliant, brilliant. And and so so perhaps if we start with talking a little bit about your background, Daniel, and um, you know how, how you got into business and why this particular one. Yeah, so we I've been an intermediary. That means um, kind of a broker for the last seven, seven, nearly eight years. Uh, but I, I was I started back in banking. So back in the days of uh, you know uh, NatWest and Lloyd's. So for I've, I've probably been that that must be what seventeen years ago now. Uh, and then we went through. The recession and crash in 2008 and then that kind of deviated and went to a different different way and then unfortunately uh, just like a lot of people that work for banks or big corporations you get made redundant and I took my severance and then started up uh, a firm in um, with a really big mortgage brokerage called Mortgage Advice Bureau yeah and yep. so I worked with them for a, a couple of years uh, and then that's when I launched uh, One Mortgages and Protection by itself in 2016. Uh, and since then, we've been looking for uh, anybody that needs mortgage advice, insurance advice personally, uh, like life insurance, critical illness. We do uh, different services for from a first time buyer to a home mover right through to anything. And then it then it expanded into more commercial work for landlords and businesses and, and other areas like that, primarily um, the profit that can be made from property. So landlords that invest, uh, renovate, uh, and just have a, a good a good income from retirement or other areas of uh, of, of property. So all in all, it's a it's a challenge because property is forever changing, especially in the current climate because of um, interest rates rising, you know, inflation, the cost of everything going. So whether property is a good investment or not. Uh, it, it, of course, it's a, still an amazing investment, but you just need to look at what you're investing in uh, and just review it with the numbers. Uh, it all, always comes back to the numbers and then you can see whether it's going to be profitable or not. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's quite interesting, actually, because we, we we work with lots of businesses and business owners on a regular basis. And, you know, we certainly work with them often about using some of the profits into, you know, in, in investing in other assets and property is often something that comes up. So I, I guess having you know expertise specifically how businesses and 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 property businesses can operate and and the sort of mm-hmm. financing options is is really valuable. So when, when you were when you were growing up, is this what you always thought you were going to do, or did you have other goals and plans? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I did. I think um, your parents, the culture, the culture of Britain, or your your parents are grafters, and and I certainly didn't come from any type of uh, you know. I came from very humble beginnings in while having to work through uh, and be be where I am. So my my parents just said, get a secure nine to five job, you know, work, work, but, you know, just work hard and be there. So that led me, I mean, I had pipe dreams like anybody that I think, I think once upon a time I wanted to be um, uh, a performer and just like be on stage or in TV or, or behind the screen or do, you know, singing, dancing, all that sort of, all that sort of stuff. Uh, that was that was soon crash came crashing down with uh, with talent or opportunity uh, just because when you don't know what what you're in you, you I think you find a lot about yourself earlier on in your career in life um, I still do enjoy a good a good sing song don't get me wrong a bit of karaoke or a bit of bit of everything but no it wasn't for me to step step uh, step that way so yeah then it, I landed in the bank listening to my parents of getting a nine to five job and just working hard. And then um, the banks and big institutions, they have a very good way of training you and getting you ready for, um, you know, life in in general. 
yes. so they they trained me very well and then I kind of just took to it and um, my ambition pushed me then to to obviously to where I am now so I, I'm really thankful for the early days not knowing what I wanted to do and I think too many people when I was at college school or you know uh, people went to university they, they you kind of get pushed down this avenue of you need to do this you need to do that and and at that age I think I was 23 when I started in the bank I had no idea what I wanted to be what I wanted to do and nobody really nurtured that question in me so uh, I kind of fell into it and then I realized that my skill set determined what I wanted to do and then I found out I enjoyed it so it was a bit of a unorthodox way of finding what I'm good at and what I enjoy but now I love it because you can my job and this industry is so varied that you can kind of pick the things that you really enjoy and really want. And it's so varied that you can get a different, a different client, a different, a different thing. So if it's people, I think industries in people is, uh, oh, sorry, jobs and careers with people is certainly where I want to be. I love, I love being with clients and uh, I know it sounds cliche and a bit cheesy, but I like dreams coming true. I love people's dreams of whether that's buying your first house, whether that's building wealth and, and grow, you know, building wealth or looking at property and, and the future of what, what that could be. It's quite exciting. It's quite, it's quite ambitious. So it's nice to see it come to fruition when a customer wants to do something and then you're, you're on a journey with them for 12 months or whatever, while you're building a, a project or renovating something, and then you get to the back end and it's all been done. It's, it's very worthwhile. Really. Absolutely love it. Passion comes out re re really strongly there. And I, I guess I was thinking that is, is we do, I do something similar, I guess, with businesses. It, it, it's helping people achieve the dreams that they, they had when they started. Because most people, when they start a business, have a dream of something. And unfortunately, with in, in many cases, that what, what appears to be reality gets in the way. And, and we start to, I think someone said a long time ago, we, we, we tend to, rather than increase... Our, our our reality to meet our dreams. Well, unfortunately, we often reduce our dreams to fit our reality, and yeah. that's quite a sad thing, I think. And we know we know the journey is so so hard. It's so it, yeah. it it veers you off into a way that you didn't you didn't expect. And there are so many um, not traps, but there are so many uh, hurdles that you have to get through, and things that unknowns, and whether that's a financial cost, whether that's um, a challenge that you've got to face emotionally, physically, financially. There are so many hurdles to only really need someone to hold your hand or you need someone to to nurture you and, and get you get you to that bit. So yeah. I'm sure you do it in business. I do it in property, you know, and you need those people to advise and guide you with your your choices and your options. And that's all I do as just as a advisor or a consultant across any type of property decision that's that's ultimately what we do brilliant wonderful and and looking as you've grown the business what what would be some of the biggest issues you've had to overcome would you say people is the biggest challenge for me yeah. um you know the i think sometimes as a business person um you have so much uh <laughs> so much uh drive and ambition and you think that the colleagues that are along with you or the partners that you're with or the people that are on that journey understand where you are and they're in your shoes and you've got your viewpoint so and and the harsh reality is they're not they're on a different plane from you they're on a different journey they're not in the same boat as you so you you push as a business leader business manager to to want these things and create the best environments and the best opportunities but unfortunately the other the people don't share that <laughs> so yes. that was the hardest thing for me is just learning that understanding of what the the person that you're working with wants and is it aligned with yours and do you both want to to proceed on that basis so people was the biggest challenge and it still continues to this day to be the yep. biggest challenge in business and in in property of of that um yeah but you get better at it. You, you do get better at it, although it's challenging it, it's that realization i think it's that big realization isn't it that not everybody thinks like me, um, which which a bit of a crazy messed up world if they did. But but it, it, it you know it's like because of that I need to communicate in the way people need to hear it for themselves rather than the way I would normally you know would communicate for me. And um, it, yeah. it's it, it's quite it's quite a big learning. So speaking thinking about sort of you know learnings 
from from running and growing your business? What are the biggest things you've learned about business um, and, and and its growth? I think the the compounding the compounding of it that uh, you know at first even for the first two three years it can be so overwhelming because you're just on this relentless uh, bashing and battle to just get through it, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you know, and especially most business people are quite stubborn. They're quite uh, hard, strong mind, strong will, strong minded. And they go, yeah, it's, it's right. It's true. We're going to keep doing it, keep doing it. So I think uh, you, if you, if you're, you are a coach, you're a business, you're business. So I think having somebody that's, that's um, got the experience and that's been there and does that, done that. Uh, and my my coach certainly did that and <laughs> told me, you might be going down the wrong road here. You've got to think about the basics and uh, is it viable? Is it profitable? Can you do it? I mean, I do that for the, I do that for my clients all the time. <laughs> but actually when you're on a journey and it's what you're looking at, you've got to think, hmm, actually that's a really good point. So staying balanced, staying balanced, um, uh staying grounded and understanding yes what the end goal is but also understanding like where have you where are you at right now and does that plan need to be revised re, 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 you know and we do that in property management and in property uh, projects because sometimes you can have this goal and and the end goal of what the value is going to be at the end and what the profit's going to be etc we always keep that in mind uh, yeah. and we have to work backwards but throughout that process of what eighteen months, twelve months, or it's a lot can change, uh, especially as we know in the current climate when you're developing or looking at houses uh, with costs going up, everything, the the, the demand, yes. uh, the supply of everything, and the housing market generally of the changes that we've had to go through, it's 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 so uh, so harsh the changes that people have yeah. had to do and and revise the numbers of it whether it still works, but um, yeah. So I hope that example of learning is is all right for your for, for your for your uh, listeners. Absolutely, and and you mentioned coaches, um, and we are a business coaching organisation. So, um, yeah, who are the best the, the best coaches you've worked with, and whether that's business, sport, or life in general? Um, so I had I had a, a business coach through uh, through your franchise, um, yeah. Stuart Wright. I don't know if you know him, based in Harrogate. Um, he was fantastic in grounding me and understanding Brilliant. the basics. So big shout out to that. And 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 but just having somebody that's in your corner, I couldn't shout. I couldn't shout enough about it. And just saying, yeah, fantastic. Um, uh, mentors or other people. I had a, a manager uh, from years ago that kind of made me from a, a boy a boy to a man and I was a bit immature and silly and you know stupid from being 18 and uh, 18 to 21 and he was a great mentor in just understanding the ways and disciplines of life um, and some people look at parents for that and my parents were absolutely fantastic in the nurturing me and making me who I am but from a disciplinarian point of perspective of you get out what you put in Yep. Nobody really was that honest with me. Nobody was really direct. And this this gentleman, uh, it was called Chris at the time. He he absolutely. Uh, how can I put this? How can I phrase, phrase this without being? He was brutal. He was just so <laughs> honest and direct of that, and it was really refreshing because well, it was it was horrible at the time. It it was hard because nobody wants to hear that when you're you're eighteen, <laughs> and nobody wants to hear eighteen to, to twenty one that oh well this isn't good enough and this is. You know, you need to do this. And why? Why do I need to do that? Because <laughs> this is going to give you something better or whatever. So the bru the, bru the brutality of it and the honesty, it kind of just taught me that in certain elements of life, certainly in business, you can't you can um, fluff it up. You've got to be straight. You've got to be honest. You've got to be direct uh, in some ways. Um, yeah. So... He was a big he was a big factor in that of me just maturing as a as a person as a human being um and Stuart as I've said and then just just on the journey of of uh, working through the networks working through um pro other professionals having a network of people around you you pick up so much from networking and being around other other professionals because um I can't remember who who said it and I'll take my own take on it but success leaves clues i think stuart told me that or other people but yes. if you're reading or you're, you're looking or you're sharing in other professionals success 
you know, you can make a very good career or doing that by just, uh, you know, not carbon copying, but looking yeah. at how they did it and, and what they did and how they do it. And that's a lot to it. Uh, that's a lot that if you can start that way and you can be disciplined enough and motivated enough to do that, y- yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a really good point. Actually, that is, is, it's nice. It's nice. And most of us want to be different, have our points of different, be, be different. However, learning from other people's successes is, is you know, is supremely sensible. Sensible, um, yeah. And our own successes. I, we do a lot of work. You're, you're probably aware we do do a lot of work. We bring a lot of sports coaching techniques and, and, and people into, into action coach because personal development is obviously from a sporting perspective, been around a long time. Yeah. There's a guy called Frank Dick who's been an athletics coach for a very long time, very, very, very high level. And I heard him say a few, a few couple of months ago, actually, it was really fascinating. He said, it's important to learn from our mistakes. So that's something we always talk about, you know, it's okay to make mistakes and learn from. But he said, if we don't learn from our victories, from our successes, then it's luck. And, and that stuck with me. So, it's, you know, it's learning from what went right as well as went wrong. Yeah. And what other people do right, I guess, is, is also useful. I think that competitiveness, and you just touched on it with sports, and I can't believe I didn't mention sports. Um, so, and a coach of mine is probably going to, if he does ever watch this, he's going to think, <laughs> why, why, why didn't I get a mention? So, yeah, <laughs> sports, sports was a massive part of my life from being really competitive and young. And I think that's what gave me the competitive spirit and the drive uh, and the discipline, again, of just uh, of being a, a sports coach. So, And I think sport teaches us so many fundamentals and so yes. many uh, disciplines of hard work, tenacity, uh, you know, the learning, like you said, of tracking performance. Sport is all about that. So sport is all whether that's aiming at a target, running faster, jumping higher, scoring a goal, results, results, results. That then leads into business. So I think when you're sportly, sport is a, is a starting point of your life. Um, it, it, there's a lot of things that can be taken from that and applied yeah. to life and applied to business. So, yeah, I, I owe a lot to to sport and competitiveness and competitive, com, you know, competitive starts. I suppose. Daniel, we must name check your sports coach. That we can't, we can't go. On Richard, without. yeah, Richard Crowther. He was called, uh, and the sport was basketball, which was a bit strange. Uh, American, American. Uh, I don't know why I was kind of into that American thing at, at, at school. I was the annoying kid that was obsessed with American sports and American football and basketball. And it was all a bit weird. It was all a bit strange, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I still loved rugby. I still loved football and, and did all that. But there was just something about the game that was so fast paced yep. and uh, exciting um, that, that I loved. So I, I, I pursued that and, and did, you know, did OK at school and you know other other organizations around uh, Yorkshire in, in basketball and then I became a coach as well and did all that so I think there's a lot to be said for that and I can't believe I didn't say it earlier but yeah there's a lot <laughs> in the background of sport and coaching uh, now that we've put our finger on it that's that's where I think it came from. Brilliant oh thank you for sharing that now it's um <clears throat> we have consistently brought you know into our business coaching discipline that that those sorts of performance elements that that have been in sport for, for many many years in fact our, our director of coaching now is is a guy who's my my personal coach is a guy called James Vincent and he's an ex um Olympic badminton coach and the, and you know the, the 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 techniques the the knowledge that he has about the performance of the individual just a, a, a second to none um and, and it's been wonderful from my perspective not just to def, you know develop my you know, the, the, that side of things alongside the um the business side of things. So, have you have you picked up? Do you use any particular favourite quotes or sayings as you, on a on a regular basis, either in good situations or challenging ones? No, I mean late, not not lately. Um, I'm I'm on a bit of a podcast uh, thing right now where I'm listening to a lot of books and a lot of stuff. I've, I've listened to uh, what's it called, Green Light, like uh, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, he's he his his um, I can't remember. There's so many, but uh, no, I, I haven't. I had. To, I don't obsess about them. I just get the 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 concept of it, the yeah. background, and go, yeah, I'll apply that. But I don't yeah. apply it um, obsessively. That it's just there in my head. Well, have you yeah. got some good ones that you use that you can share with me? 
I, well, I, 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 a, I've got some I use, but also I picked, I picked up so many brilliant ones from from these interviews. Um, that, that there's a there's a restaurateur that that, that I know who's, who's got places well all over Yorkshire, and 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 it was the most succinct quote I've 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 heard about looking forwards or backwards. And he said, "Don't look backwards because we're not going in that direction." And I, I just found that to be really cool because it is like that, you know, really good. And and another, I remember one of the other interviews, a great quote. Um, especially from a resilience point of view, was we've all overcome 100% of our challenges so far. Yeah. And the, and again, in, in what are currently, you know, for many people, challenging times, I think that's a really good thing to fall back on. Um, yeah. And, and you know, I've had other conversations, and I, and I do personally believe that, you know, we've had three events um, that together, we'll, we, you know, we won't see for, for generations that have affected the, the business and and the general economy and you know mm. we 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 we're coming through them yes you know we're probably on the last you know with the cost of living crisis etc that's probably the last one but having you know we've overcome as as a as a nation as a world we've overcome covid we've overcome many things and you know we should draw on that to to look forward so that those are probably those I think the other two um that are but my personal ones was a, a Japanese um saying or statement which is um, fall down seven times but get up eight and that's that's probably my my favorite and the other one would be um henry ford i think it was who said whether you think you can or think you can't you're right yeah so the, uh, i like the rocky one i can't remember exactly what it is where it says it, it what what kind of it what when it hits you you it's not how you i can't remember how it's, it's what think, how you get up how you come through it and that the 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 speech of Rocky is, is it just came to mind when you said that it's, uh, it's it's not how hard you get hit it's how I can't remember what the it's, rest of it you know, you bang on it it's 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 not how hard you hit it's how hard you can get hit and still and keep moving, moving forward yeah, yeah. And, st- and keep moving so that's that's my I t- I'll take that one I'll take, we'll that, take one. that one I wish I could press a button to play some music but I won't be able to do that right now <laughs> if I could have done the Rocky theme I'd have done that as you were saying it but, uh, but yeah. you can cut that in afterwards just put that bit in the <laughs> Rocky theme good. yeah this is what you meant <laughs> boom and then put it in and then the, put the music in behind it. That would be um, good. Editing, that would be really good. good. Words, but I'm not sure we are. But I'll have a look. We'll have a look. So, what, Danny, what would you say you've learned about yourself through your journey so far? I think I've learned a lot of patience. Um, I think I've learned, yeah, I think I've learned a lot of patience, a lot of understanding, a lot of compassion for, like I said, other people that you work with and other people you that work for you that, that um, not everybody is on the same uh appetite of what it you may be on the same uh desire the same uh vision of what you want but just yeah so the patience element i think i've mellowed a lot and chilled out a lot uh personally um you know that you're not as not as stressed although stress is still a massive factor in business and uh, so you've got to learn how to deal with that um yeah. i think i was very harsh and straight talking in my early earlier years or even the bank made me that way um so in business i don't think i realized that i think you you know when you're in a bank and you're protected you you, uh, you or you're in a big organization an institution you are in this massive comfort blanket yeah. um of somebody higher up than you that gives you the support and somebody there so if you if you're doing it it's like yeah but i'm doing it for the bank i'm doing it for you whereas when you're in a small sme environment and it's your business or your clients literally everything matters every yeah. single bit of every engagement you have every conversation every quote every every uh communication you have every little bit of detail matters but then there's the flip side to that of going yeah but we still need to be op- profitable we still need to be operationally yes. viable so yeah. it's very difficult to uh, obsess about every mi- minuscule detail and go over the little tiny small things that of course matter but then also the other side of it of going, well, we still have to, we still have mouths to feed. We still have to run at a profit. We still have to be operationally viable. Yes. Um, and, and I think um, that was a very hard thing to uh, manage in the yeah. early years, in the early time. Yeah, that, 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 that makes a lot, lot of sense. So, so looking forward, what, what, what does the future look like for you guys? And, and what are the main challenges you face, if any? Um, the challenge around the tampering down the growth 
aspect of, you know, every business owner probably has this ambition to, well, I would expect unless I'm really different, but you go, <laughs> we want, I'm going to take over the world. I'm going to have 50 advisors and it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to get a really big office and it's going to be fantastic. And then you're like, yeah, that probably is going to take a decade to get there. Um, so just tampering down that of going, this still is the end goal, but maybe just a little bit more progressive and a little bit uh, slower paced of it. But you go through so many ups and downs of people and losing and, um, yeah. you know, you make a plan and going, well, I want to do this and we've got to expand there. But actually my judgment on getting there was just it wrong. So do we, do we still want to grow? Of course we still want to grow. Do I still want to um, help as many people as possible and get to that point? Yes. Do I still want to teach um, and inspire and coach new advisors, new property consultants, new people coming through to build the business? Of course I do. Uh, but the challenges faced with that infrastructure and building was far greater and bigger than I could have ever imagined. So I'm still on that journey myself. I'm still yep. learning uh, as a business owner and a, as a, as you know, as a professional in this industry that things change and the challenges of being an operator, being an advisor and then being a business owner and operator. I'm sure this sings a lot with you and you understand is, is so different because I think you have so many hats to use in any yep. business. And then you go, well, I'm going to be a salesman one minute and I'm going to be say, you know, managing sales. And then I'm going to be a marketer, marketeer. And then yeah. I'm going to be an accountant because I've got to do the accounts and the money. And then I've got to go and do, and then I've got, oh, well, hold on a minute. I've got back to be an advisor and I've got to do all this. So yeah, uh, it, it's uh, it's forever challenging, but we're not off the, we're not off the tracks. We're still going to push on and grow to hopefully back, back to 10, 10, 10 a size of 10, hopefully within the next year. Brilliant. So oh, really best of luck. And it, 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 you know, it, it is challenging times for many businesses. And so it's, it, it's, as you say, taking the pragmatic view of what is achievable in, in, you know, in the timescales and the current situation. So uh, be great, be great to swing by in, in, in 12 months and just see, you know, how you've developed and uh, that, that'd be really enjoyable. And, and I'm keen to know, what, what would you say to anyone that was thinking of going into business right now? I think, um, Oh, gosh, that's a difficult question, isn't it? Um, I think I, I very, over time, I think I've, cha I've changed this view of viewpoint of going, was I ready? Could I have done it? Would I have prepped a little bit more? Would I have been more prepared? And I don't think I would have. I've got no regrets. I certainly wouldn't. So if you're going to do it, just make sure you mitigate as much risks as possible. Yeah. Of course, cash is king, cash flow and money. Uh, of what your commitments and outgoings are. But I think on that journey of the um, appetite versus the, the plan and the appetite versus what the risks and challenges are, that is different from every single person. Like I said, if you're a single sole operator and you just start, is that enough? And do you want a lifestyle business? Then it's it's an easy decision. However, if you want to go bigger and better and have employees and HR to worry about and, you know, payroll and offices and everything else, which I think that's changed. I'll be really honest. I think because yeah. of COVID, because of not having a premises, because of not everything, everything, I think people's appetite and viewpoint has completely changed of going, do you know what? Yeah. I don't need to do that. I can have a really nice lifestyle business uh, and I don't need all that. So yeah. really, um, that's the decision I had to go through going, well, what, what am I doing it for? And what are the motives? And just questioning the motives of if I'm giving back and teaching and growing, then yeah, it could be, uh, and you can still have that. But with the market and the environment of people working online, not requiring a premises, doing it, it's a really difficult decision, which is, makes it harder. It makes it harder for going into business because that challenge of growth although you can do it on Zoom and everything else like that, it's just so much harder, so yeah. much harder. Um, yeah. yeah. And, it, and and if you if you were to start again, is there anything you you do differently, do you think? Um, yeah, I think uh, in hindsight, I think I would be, I would be, be less of a, less of a um, control freak, less of a... <laughs> you know, uh, 
kind of my my way this way and and have that somebody because I didn't have a coach in the first four years and my business partner probably just thought it was a big waste of money and we didn't need it and it was everything but I think or my business partner maybe been a bit a little bit more stronger uh, and more grounding as a business coach would but I needed somebody to, to tamper me down because the ambition was far greater versus the value so the yeah in hindsight I think I would have just been a little bit more patient I would have just been a little bit more uh, I don't know what the word is kind of progressive rather than everything now um, and I think everybody wants that don't they everybody wants their goal and I know what I'm doing I'm ready let's ramp it up and everybody talks in business about scaling. Let's scale it. You're ready. You scale. And then sometimes you scale too early and it's like, no, damn. Um, but yeah, there's so much detail around uh, building the infrastructure. And you'll know more than me. And maybe you could tell me very quickly. Uh, my business touch told me there were so many hours in to get to a business point where it's um, viable, sustainable, can operate without you in it. How many hours on average, do you think it takes to get to a business point where you're going, everything's done and dusted? How many hours is that? I, I, I typically say there's nothing that cannot be achieved in three to five years, you know, and and, and if a business is already established, then uh, ahead of that. But it is about, I think the key thing, and what you highlighted is, uh, I've always had this belief that anything, which, which is interesting because it sort of sits with A, what you first said, and B, what you secondly said, which was, Anything can be achieved in any time scale, it, as long as we understand the investment of time, energy, effort, money, and risk, and be willing to take that, put that investment in. So, yeah. you know, if you want to go really fast, you can go really fast. There's plenty of examples that, that where that happens, but the amount of investment of, of effort, energy, money, and risk is probably way higher than if we actually say we could get to where we want to be on a on a more steady, slower basis with less risk, possibly less effort, pro probably less investment because we can do a bit more of an organic growth. So I, I, it's a really interesting question to, to answer, but certainly I think anyone can achieve their goals within, you know, three to five years, especially with an established business is my suggestion. Oh, that, Chris, if I could have known, if I could go back in my DeLorean <laughs> or my timesheet or my, <laughs> my, my thing and just go, why didn't I meet a guy just like Chris? Eight, eight years ago why didn't i meet that guy and then and then we would have been fine wouldn't we but yeah unfortunately you probably wouldn't have been able to handle me to be honest back well, then now it's a dream but back then you'd be like nah this guy is nah he's, you can't speak to him he doesn't know he's very pig-headed very very stubborn uh and 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 do that so well, yeah. you, you you've set us up for the last for the last question but before that it's interesting what you say because Historically, um, and, and in general, we haven't, I haven't worked with many what I call startups, so many people in the first year or two, because, and the way I, I've typically said it, they, because, you know, we've got our dreams, we've got, we've got to have a level of surety and absolutely we're going to make it. So, and what I often say is that, you know, we have to give them a couple of years to get the crap kicked out of them from, from, from reality to then be open to the learning of how to do it in a different way, not a better way. Sometimes we need to do that. So it's not like it's a, a bad thing, but yeah, it, it's, a bit, you know, and, and, and with all, you know, in all honesty, Daniel, if we don't have that absolute belief and drive, we probably would never start. So it's almost like a phase we have to go through, however painful it is, if, if that makes yeah. sense. There isn't any right or wrong. It's just, that sometimes we need to. But highlighting the last question I've got for you, which is what would the best advice you'd give an 18-year-old you if you could go back in the DeLorean and, oh, and do so? If I could go back to an 18-year-old me, I think I would be. it would be start, but stay consistent. So too many people don't want to, or they want to prep and not start, but then too many people start, but they're not consistent. So yes. the, the, the message for me would be start, but stay consistent, start something uh, and that can change, you know, but just stay consistent because if you don't stay consistent, you, you, you're you going to lose everything really? or, or start again and then start again. So the consistency element is, is key. I think uh, if you're not working towards the goal or, or, the, or the plan, you're not staying consistent and then, and then you flake out and, or you burn out. Um, so yeah, start, 
start something because I didn't know what to start back then. I was like, woo, this is fun. Let's go do this. Woo. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know where the, the, the influence of the, the decisions to, to plan for business and how you how you land upon it. How what's your what's your background? How did you start and how did you get into um to where you are now? What what sector and industry did you did you yeah, start in? Really good question. And there's a couple of very close analogies to to to, to you in many ways. So I I joined um a business in Harrogate as joint third employee, having been made redundant from a previous job, which was really interesting. And it was the best thing that ever would have happened because it was a very um it was a very safe, secure job that would have had me a nice life over a period of time and ended up with a nice pension, et cetera, but was very, but very much boring, steady, didn't really suit me. So we got married on it, joined a business over in Harrogate, joint third employee, and, and, and four of us, and it became five of us, grew that to hundred pe- over 100 people, 12 million turnover, and, and then we sold it to Siemens in 2002, um, which all sounds great, and, and it was great in many ways, but... I, I founded a division that, that grew incredibly fast, which was part of the growth of the company. So I ended up doing three years of 100-hour weeks. So, it, and it pretty much broke me, to be perfectly frank. I, I didn't understand, you know, we, we, we had that amazingly, exp- you know, incredible growth that a lot of people think of and dream of, but it was probably the worst thing that could have happened to me. Um, and so... Having sold successfully and, and 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 made a bit of cash, it, for me, doing this was about helping people grow, but enjoy it, not just sort of tolerate it. If that makes sense, um, a lot of people, I think, in business, put their choose to put their life on hold for ten years and hope the millions turn up eventually. But my proposition to most people is, if we're really enjoying it and everyone around us is enjoying it, we'll probably get there actually faster, probably and certainly more in a happier way and probably more profitably um mm-hmm. so that's yeah that's that's where i've come from and the, the, the sector was um it was tech it would have been called tech then it wasn't really the same as tech now so it was software and consultancy to the power industry so we I've, I've i've worked on most of or many of the power stations in the uk um over over the previous sort of 20 years and um we ended up with um involved in trading of power um which was a, a, a interesting but not particularly fascinating thing mm. yeah it's, yeah. Um, yeah it's an interesting it was an interesting journey and I, I guess it, it, what you sparked off it's almost like if I was in, in, interviewed myself in this manner what I would say about some of these things um, but yeah I'd definitely say do it um, and I'd probably say something a bit similar to you is that my, you know I have a big drive to do things very quickly um, and, and, and that's great but it's also do it in a way that the growth is supported and isn't something that is unsustainable. And, you know, the growth we had was sustainable, but not by me. You know, I, I personally, yeah, run out, ran, ran out of time and um, capability for a period. And it was, um, yeah, it was, it was quite pleasant. But it's a good story now. It's, uh, you know, it's okay. It, was, it, was, it, was, it, it sounds good. But it, it's, worked it, it, it worked it, out. It worked out. It worked out. And that, and that was great. But it's, um, yeah, it, 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 business is challenging, but should, but can and should be, Fun and joyful, in my opinion. So that's that's our goal for for the business. Daniel, it's really been fascinating. I really could talk all day. Um, but um, j- just just we wind up. What would be the, anyone watching that would like to get in touch with you or or the One Financial Group? What would be the best way of of getting in touch with you? Yeah, so we um, we're on obviously Google. Just Google One Mortgages and Protection uh, One Estates if it's property related. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, just just connect with me on LinkedIn if you need any help. Uh, in relation to any property related consultant, uh, whether that's buy to let, development, conversion, planning, anything at all uh, in relation to business um, property or um, plans for property for retirement, uh, just just uh, just look us up. Wonderful. Well, get, once again, thanks so much for your time today, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Cheers.